Good morning and welcome to the faith community of St. Maria Goretti and Our Lady of the Angels Parishes. Today we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Brother Jonathan. Our gathering hymn is number 563, Lift Up Your Hearts, number 563. Let us join our voices together as we sing the Lord's praises. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So good morning. Uh, amongst many things, this, this, um, these past several days, we've been in the, the midst of um, uh, the week of prayer for Christian unity. Um, that, that, you know, based on, on Jesus's prayer in, in the gospel of John, that, that we all might be one, um, you know, one, one in Christ, one in faith, one in love, uh, one in what we believe, but most of all, you know, one in, in Jesus himself. Um, so as we begin, um, let's reflect on, on, you know, where maybe we've been, disruptors of that oneness where we've where we've sowed more division than 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 unity in our our lives and and ask for uh, mercy and forgiveness you O lord are the anointed one of god lord have mercy you are in our midst as one who serves christ have mercy you, O Lord, are the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll, so that all the people might see it, for he was standing up higher than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra the prescribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich food and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to the Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock 
and my Redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and all were given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Send me to bring glad tidings and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who are eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee and the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the press go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. And he said to them, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of the Lord. Uh, back in 2019, uh, in an effort to increase love for the written word of Scripture, uh, Pope Francis declared that the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, uh, this Sunday, would henceforth be the Word of God Sunday, uh, with the focus on the written word of God, Scripture, you know, the Bible. Uh, of course, we hear Scripture proclaimed every Sunday. So in a sense, you know, every Sunday is Word of God Sunday. Uh, but what Pope Francis wants and what should we, we should all want is that 
to really appreciate scripture, to really, uh, you know, appreciate the inspired word of God, uh, Sunday cannot be the only time we expose ourselves to scripture. You know, Bible reading, study, and reflection uh, should be a regular, if not daily, activity in our lives. I mean, along with sacred tradition, uh, scripture the, the, um, is our revelation. It's our source of revelation. You know, it's the source that we have that tells us, it tells us who we are. You know, it tells us who God is. It, it tells us, you know, how we should live as creatures of, um, you know, a beloved, a loving and, and good creator. You know, I think one of the reasons so many of us are, are hesitant to, to dive into scripture, to, to make it a part of our, our regular lives is, is that we don't, we don't really real, realize that. I mean, yes, we realize that scripture tells us about God, uh, that it tells us God's commandments and, and that it's revelation. Uh, but we fail to see what scripture tells us about ourselves, um, you know, how it tells us who, who we are. Uh, but it does. You know, it tells us where we came from. It tells us what our purpose is. Uh, it tells us where we're going and, you know, and how we're supposed to get there. Uh, the tendency today and the tendency for a while has been really to, you know, reject the past, reject whatever's come before, you know, set off on our, set off on our own, you know, create our own rules. Um, in some cases, you know, create a, a whole new identity that has nothing to do with, you know, anything from the past or that's come before and to just write our own story as if it's all new that we came from, from nowhere. Uh, but actually, we're all part of one grand story. You know, the story, uh, the story, the story, uh, the story of God's love, which we find first most in the Bible. A story that is fulfilled, as we heard in today's gospel, by Jesus, uh, the word made flesh. I mean, yes, we each have, you know, our unique lives, our, our, our individual lives, uh, our unique roles that, that we play, part of the story. You know, our individual stories are part of the story. story that we receive our identity, our place, our purpose, our path, um, our destination. And not only that, but it's within the, the larger, the greater story that each of our stories come together. Um, that, that they collide, if you will. That they connect. They, they intersect. Um, you know, in the Bible, in our faith, my story is connected to your story. Uh, your story is connected to her story. Her story is connected to his story. And all our stories are caught up in God's great story of love in, in Jesus. And more than anywhere, our stories come together here, you know, in worship. As we join one another in giving praise and glory to, to the one true God. Uh, but we learn our stories. We, we see their connections to the great story, you know, the deeper we delve into scripture. Uh, it's our history, it's our legacy, it's our future, it's our destiny. Um, recently, I've been hearing um, more and more, you know, news reports, news uh, or, or studies, medical studies, um, scientific studies uh, about um, an increasing sense of anxiety in, in our world, in our society. Uh, more and more people are reporting um, depression than, than really ever before. You know, it's a phenomena that's been happening for a while. Uh, it's been growing. Uh, but, but since the onset of COVID, uh, it's become more prevalent, um, more recognizable. Uh, people are, are talking about it and, and sharing with it, about it with others. And anxiety and, and depression um, are... I mean, they are real true things and, and they can be a severe handicap in, in people's lives. And, and if it's something that, that is overwhelming you, um, you know, you can, and you, maybe you should, um, you know, seek uh, professional medical help and please do so. But when a society, when the levels of anxiety are, are 
increase in an entire society when depression is, is such a problem in an entire society. It's, it's really a spiritual problem. Uh, yes, individually it may be medical, but, but society-wise it's a spiritual problem. It's a, it's a loss of our connections. Uh, you know, when society is constantly telling us that, that our past does not matter, you know, where we come from does not matter, uh, where we are going, you know, does not matter. What we do, you know, as long as it's with other consenting adults, you know, doesn't matter. You know, all that matters is that you just live the, your life on your own terms and without a thought with anybody else's. You know, make your own, own rules. Then yes, we're going to be disconnected. We're going to be lost. Uh, we're going to have no foundation, no compass uh, for our lives. And so, yes, we're going to lose our sense of meaning and purpose because there really isn't any. Uh, that's why today, maybe more than ever, you know, Scripture, the Bible, is so important. Again, it's our story. It's where we came from. It's where we're going. It's how we get there. You know, it connects us, and we need that connection. Uh, without it, we shouldn't be surprised that so many are lost. This has happened before, actually. Uh, we can see this in, in today's first reading from ne Nehemiah. Uh, this reading takes place about 50 years after the Israelites returned from exile. Um, if you remember, Babylon had, had conquered Jerusalem. It had uh, destroyed the temple and, and exiled all its inhabitants to, to Babylon. Uh, but 70 years after that, Persia conquered Babylon and allowed the Jews to return to their holy city. Uh, but the city that they returned to was just a shell of its former self. And the people that returned were lost. They, they were rudderless. Uh, they, they had been, you know, away for so long that they really didn't know who they were anymore. And after rebuilding the city walls, Nehemiah and, and Ezra really have what amounts to is a religious rally, a spiritual revival of sorts, uh, where they read, read to the people from the Torah, uh, you know, the law, God's, God's path for their life. Uh, what we think of the, as the first five books of the Bible, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers. Uh, and as the people hear the books of the law read, you know, at first they're overcome with sadness. They're overcome with grief uh, because they really begin to realize just how far they've strayed, how, how lost they've become, uh, how unfaithful and rudderless they are. Uh, but then with the encouragement of Nehemiah and Ezra, uh, they begin to rejoice. They begin to celebrate because they begin to remember who they are. They rediscover their identity. And they hear again the promises made to them by God. And at that moment, they go from, from individual refugees, individual exiles, um, you know, that were lost. Uh, they go from that into a people, into a nation. Uh, a people, a nation of God. See, when we hear scripture, when we hear scripture, it's not just words. It's not just words that convey, you know, information or, or meaning. I mean, it is words that convey information and meaning. And when we, when we talk about that, um, often we'll talk about the literal meaning of scripture, the literal meaning of the text. Uh, but scripture is more than that. It, it has power. Uh, in reading and hearing scripture, we can be touched, we can be moved, uh, we can be challenged, we can be changed, we can be transformed. You know, sometimes you open up a Bible, you just randomly open up a Bible, and your eyes fall on a text um, or a sentence. And, and you may have never seen it before, but it's exactly what you need to hear right at that moment, you know, at that moment in your life. Uh, sometimes you read words from Jesus, and, and that's just what all they are. It's just words. I mean, Jesus' words have spirit and life. They are words of spirit and life. But sometimes we don't receive them as that. We just receive them as, as words. Uh, but other times we read the words of Jesus or hear the words of Jesus, and it's like he's speaking right to you, directly to you, uh, because he is. You know, when I was first discerning the priesthood, there were texts that, that I'd probably read a hundred times that, that had little or no effect on me. Um, 
But then suddenly the, the same text would hit me right between the eyes. Like, like I was the rich man that Jesus was talking to. Or I was the person that, that Jesus was stating that parable to specifically. In the gospel today, we have Jesus proclaiming scripture himself. You know, even Jesus read scripture. Scripture were the words that Jesus lived by. It's what he, he you know, had it, put it, made his life go by. Um, the scripture passage that he read was, was from Isaiah. It was a promise of good news, of healing, of, of freedom, and of redemption. And of course, after Jesus read it, he proclaimed to the people that, that this scripture was being fulfilled right then in their hearing, uh, that he was the fulfillment of scripture. And he is. I mean, Jesus is the fulfillment of all scripture, all revelation. You know, he's the fulfillment of all God's promises to us. Uh, but in a particular way, you know, he's the fulfillment of that specific reading. Because whenever we encounter Jesus, whenever Jesus is encountered, we do experience good news. Whenever Jesus is encountered, we do experience healing, freedom, and redemption. And as Catholics, you know, we're, we're, we're privileged to encounter Jesus, you know, in so many ways. Uh, we encounter him in, in one another when, when we, you know, when we experience uh, Christian love and charity from another person. Uh, we, we encounter him here in the assembly, uh, in the church, as St. As Paul you know, most poetically writes in, in his second or first letter to the Corinthians. Uh, we, re, we encounter him in the sacraments, uh, most of all in the, in the Eucharist, you know, where we encounter him in his body, blood, soul, and divinity, and actually have communion with him and one another. But we also encounter him in scripture, uh, our story, the great story, the living, healing words of the word, you know, Jesus, words that we need, words that we all have access to whenever we want, uh, words of our life, for, for our life and our good. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come, amen. 
as disciples in Christ, anointed in baptism and formed by the word, uh, we turn to our God in prayer. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer for Pope Francis and all the members of the church, that we may grow in our sense of urgency in living faithfully the word of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit with our nation and our leaders as they strive to bring about greater unity and cooperation among all our citizens and within the world community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing upon all the efforts to contain and eliminate the threat of the coronavirus and for the health and safety of all our first responders, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence in all the troubled parts of our world and for healing of the minds and hearts of those who have been victims of violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For continued growth in unity and cooperation among the members of our two parishes, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering of our parishes, especially for the hospitalized and homebound, that they may know and experience the love and healing presence of our God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone to the Lord, we especially remember Susan Diamond and Capuchin Father Francis Xavier Russo, who passed away this week, and for Josephine Dolsky, whom we remember at this liturgy, that they may share in the rewards of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever-living God, in our baptism, you anoint us and mark us as your own. Help us to live as your chosen people, blessed and filled by the Holy Spirit. Hear and answer these prayers we make today through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 586. We are many parts, number five, eight, six.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. So in honor of this week's, um, the week of prayer for Christian unity, I will be praying the Eucharistic prayer for various needs. Number one, the church on the path of unity. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. You have filled, in having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior of the world. For by your cross 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son and whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel, strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope and David, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and the martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your son. Through him, with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. All right, please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Tony Jester uh, to, to speak a few moments, um, to share uh, some of the, the good things she's doing and, and the people at Rachel's Vineyard are doing. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, Brother Jonathan said, my name is Tony Jester, and I'm the retreat facilitator for Rachel's Vineyard Ministry. And I particularly want to thank uh, Brother John and Brother Jonathan, and in a special way, my church family, for this opportunity to speak to you about our work. Rachel's Vineyard is a weekend retreat for women and men who struggle in the, with the emotional and spiritual pain of abortion and who seek healing and peace. It is open to single women and men, married couples, mothers and fathers, grandparents, siblings, and of, of aborted children, as well as those who've worked in the abortion industry. In a nurturing, emotionally safe environment, the retreatants can openly grieve their lost children and address all the ways that they've been affected by abortion. Pain and suffering is transformed through a spiritual process using rituals, meditations, and culminating in a memorial service to acknowledge and honor their lost children, to surrender them to the loving care of God, and to replace their sorrow and regret with acceptance, hope, and peace. The retreat is presented from the Catholic tradition, and the team includes a Catholic priest, a therapist, and others who have found healing from the retreat. It is open to anyone regardless of faith, tradition, or absence of one. All one needs is a desire for healing, and God will do the rest. Our youngest retreatant has been 19, and our oldest retreatant has been 83. This ministry was founded by Dr. Teresa Burke and initially started as a grassroots ministry in her living room. And it has now grown not only to a national ministry in most states, but also to an international ministry in Canada, Europe, South America, Africa, and Australia. Rachel's Vineyard of Pittsburgh is a nonprofit volunteer ministry dependent upon the generosity of our benefactors. Those of us who are called to this ministry know that Jesus is the divine physician and healer, and we are only his instruments. We are humbled and honored to serve. So today my invitation is to the, anyone who is struggling or suffering, please come to the retreat and meet the merciful Jesus. I will be available after Mass with my business cards, as well as brochures for our next retreat, which is April the 22nd through the 24th, 2022. Um, first of all, and most important, please pray for our work. Second, if it's possible, we'll be accepting free will donations, and know that we will be good stewards of any donations you provide. And finally, I'd ask you to take a business card or a brochure so you can learn more about the ministry. But also, if you know anyone who needs to come on this retreat, please give it to them and encourage them to come. Now, I know that there are people who are celebrating Mass today from home, so I'm going to give you our website. If you want this information, please go online and you can find out about us. Um, our website is rvofpgh.com. I thank you now for your kind attention. And I'll close with these beautiful words from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 15 through 16. Thus says the Lord, In Ramah is heard the sound of moaning, of bitter weeping. Rachel mourns her children, she refuses to be consoled 
because her children are no more. Cease your cries of mourning. Wipe the tears from your eyes. The sorrow you have shown will have its reward. There is hope for your future, says the Lord. Thank you, Tony. Um, and please be assured of our, our prayers and, and our, our support. And, and uh, God bless you. And God bless uh, the people of Rachel's Vineyard. Um, she mentioned the people following us online, and I totally forgot about that. I, I normally uh, try to pray a, a prayer of spiritual communion, uh, but, but I'm sure all the people online did it, did it on their own. Sorry, people on the line. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, one other announcement is that we, if, if you um, need your, a letter about, of your contributions for the calendar year of 2021 um, for tax purposes or for whatever, um, you can get it just please call the parish office and, and we will provide you one as soon as possible. Um, do we have anybody who is here visiting us for the first time? If so, please raise your hand so we can, uh, we can recognize and welcome you. Oh, all right. Um, where are you from? California? Oh, India, India, all right, that's the same thing, really. The, the, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to Our Lady of the Angels. Welcome to Our Lady of the Angels in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh. Any other visitors? Uh, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to recognize? Birth, oh, oh, birthday? Is it your birthday? Me. Yeah, today? Today, happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Is your birthday today also? Tomorrow? Happy birthday. Congratulations. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? I know that it's Tony's birthday today, who, who just spoke. Yeah, uh, she's, she's in the back. Yeah, and it was my birthday yesterday, but that was yesterday. So that, uh, I'm getting... I guess that's what it was. I, I, because I'm getting older, I forgot about the people <laughs> in, uh, online. All right. All right, well, please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Please join in singing number 196, Holy God, we praise thy name, number 196.